Hey folks, it is Caldec and I am installing a UT comp for a good friend of mine. So he has bought all the parts necessary to do this. Now because I didn't have all these parts available in one hit when I was doing mine, I thought I'd give you a nice little video rundown of all the parts we're using to install this bad boy. Excuse me for the funny voice, I'm just regurgitating breakfast. So we've got here on the left hand side the UT Comp Pro, which I recommend for the Legnum because of the numbers of inputs that you can actually uh, configure into this. Uh, this is actually a, a wiring diagram which shows all the things we can do um, uh, with the UT Comp. It shows you all the inputs we've got. Uh, so actually configuring all our inputs to, from the ECU on the Legnum and also the additional sensors we're going to be wiring in. So the way we install this is we take the display screen and we dremel away the clock which you've seen other videos of mine down here. I'll link to those on how we do that. But basically we remove the clock and we do some dremeling and this mounts in here so that the display is hidden behind the clock cover. The UT Comp comes with a three button um, control board. We don't need to use this because we're going to be doing rewiring of the existing three clock buttons to provide the same controls to the UT Comp. It also comes with a buzzer or a speaker for uh, alerts and warnings from tones when you press the button. It comes with four temperature probes. We're only going to be using two of these for outside air temp and inside air temp. We have some additional sensors over here, which I'll get into in a minute. But some of the sensors we actually, uh, sorry, some of the inputs we use to the UT Comp, we pull from the VR4 ECU. So we actually use the pinouts on the VR4 to take, I believe it's uh, pin uh, 13, or we'll see, injector one. Where is injector one on there? Here we go. Pin number one, which is this one, which is uh, black and red. We uh, tap into that wire at the back of the ECU to get the injector trigger and we use that to feed into the UT comp to give us hyper accurate fuel consumption readings. Uh, we also take the water temperature sensor uh, wire and we tap that wire as well on the ECU so that we can actually get uh, the water temperature displayed on the UT comp and we take the vehicle speed sensor wire as well um, on C39 pin 16 up here and we tap the vehicle speed so we can actually monitor the speed so it actually acts as, oddly enough, a trip computer. The main thing we tend to want to use this for, for the VR4 though, is data input, things like boost sensors and whatnot. So what sensors have we got? We have a nice uh, GM style uh, three bar map sensor here which we're going to mount, um, feed a vacuum hose into from the motor. We're going to wire this into the UT comp. We have a uh, two pin uh, oil temperature sensor which we're also going to wire in, and we have a three-wire uh, uh, pressure transducer also for oil uh, for the oil system, and that's also going to be wired directly back into the UT comp. We're going to wire those back into the main system using uh, some four-wire correction four-core microphone cable. This one I think is a little bit thicker than the one I used, but maybe my memory is just bad. They do seem like very heavy gauge wires. Uh, anyway, I might go back to JCAR or the electronic shop and see if I can find a thinner version of this because this is quite thick and we do have to run this through the uh, firewall or through the wheel arches um, from the wiring holes. The way the uh, oil pressure and oil temperature sensors wire in to the car is using this sandwich plate. So this goes in between the oil filter uh, on the bottom here with my finger and the engine which is this side and it has screw holes which are 1 8 NPT threads which these two devices here plug into uh, screw into uh, and we also tap that I uh, feel that last hole in with the bolt that came with the kit so it doesn't spew oil everywhere and that allows us to tap in easily into get temperature and oil pressure now this is a fairly semi-accurate oil temperature sensor if you don't like it one of the tricks you can do is you can drill this out, get the epoxy out of it. You can take one of these bad boys, which are hyper accurate, and insert that into the hole in here and then re-glue it in if you really, really wanted to. But look, it depends what you're trying to get out of it, and I think the accuracy of this is fine. Uh, it's very similar to what I have, I have mounted in my car. However, in my car, I do not have an oil pressure transducer. I have a... Um, older style oil pressure gauge, one of those big tank sort of looking things that screws in and they're not as accurate and they only read to 100 psi. This reads to 150 and is much more accurate because it's basically a, it's basically a liquid map sensor, right? But measuring the pressure of a liquid. Uh, functions very similarly to this little guy here. And the last thing we have is a wideband kit. 
So this is probably the cheapest way of getting wideband uh, airfield ratios into your car whilst at the same time getting all these other signals including your trip computer stuff, fuel consumption, etc. Because the cost in Australia for a, a wideband kit from someone like Innovate Motorsports uh, or AEM, uh, I should say, uh, is around about four to five hundred dollars. Uh, this kit here, which includes the uh, Bosch uh, LSU 4.9 sensor, I think it's 4.9, uh, and the uh, wiring and the controller box from an Australian company called um, uh, Tech Edge is $254. So what this box does is it, ta it, it drives the uh, wideband airfield ratio sensor with power, reads the signal, and outputs that signal into a zero to five volt um, signal which comes out these pins here, wideband plus wideband negative. And we then feed that into some of the inputs on the UT comp. So what we end up happening, uh, having, I should say, is a single display which has wideband AFR for a very cheap price, all pressure, sorry, all pressure, all temperature, boost pressure, fuel uh, consumption, vehicle speed, water temperature, for the grand total in terms of parts here of around about $500, which is a pretty good deal considering many of the uh, name brand gauges themselves are about 500 bucks just for the gauge and to do one thing. However, what's the downside? The downside is somebody has to fit it. So if you did get someone to fit this for you commercially, it's probably about minimum four to five hours of labor, I would suggest, uh, unless they had kits media made up. I don't, I'm basically borrowing the thing from scratch. Uh, so for that amount of money, uh, you really are looking for someone like me who's going to do it for you cheaply. Uh, I'm basically doing this to my mate as a favour because he did me a huge favour recently and I even paid for the UT comp for him. The only thing he paid for was the sensors. So he's getting this uh, installed for free. So he's a lucky bloke. So there you go. That is the entire kit. And uh, once it's all installed, we'll uh, give you a rundown in his Galant uh, as a comparison to how it's installed in my Lignum.